This show has been brought to you by Smith's Detection and the National Air Traffic Controllers Association. My voice is the voice that guides you home safely each and every day. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. I am the voice of the safest and most efficient airspace in the world. I have to be 100%, 100% of the time. I am. I am. I am. I am a professional air traffic controller. Hi, I'm Melissa Sabatine. Welcome to another edition of One on One. Today my guest is NTSB Chairman Deborah Herzman. Created as an independent federal agency in 1967, the National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB, has investigated more than 132,000 accidents and issued more than 13,500 safety recommendations. The NTSB is recognized internationally as a preeminent accident investigation organization. My guest today, Chairman Deborah Herzman, serves as the head of the agency, which has over 400 employees and annual budget of more than $100 million. Chairman Herzman is recognized as one of the nation's most visionary and passionate safety leaders, advocating for safety across all modes of transportation. Among her many initiatives, Chairman Herzman has focused attention and actions on distracted driving, child passenger safety, and helping accident victims and their families. She emphasizes the NTSB's role as the conscience and the compass of the transportation industry. We are honored to have her here today to discuss the NTSB's 2014 Most Wanted list. Hi, Chairman Herzman. Thank you for joining us again this year. I'm happy to be back with you, Melissa. You had a really busy week last week with your, all your press announcements. Now, could you remind our viewers again what the origin is of the NTSB's Most Wanted list? Sure. Our Most Wanted list is actually about 20 years old. Um, we, uh, we started it back in 1990, and it went on for about 20 years as two separate lists, one federal list and one state list. And the reason why we had state lists is because many of the issues, particularly with respect to highway safety, are state focused. And so in, um, in about tw 2010, we combined all of those and we created a reformatted list. And that list has only 10 issues. And so it's really our top 10, like the FBI's top 10, and we're focusing on 10 issues. And each year we assess which issues we think are the most ripe for change and we put those issues on our most wanted list. And so we're excited to talk about some new issues for 2014. So what's on the list for 2014? Well, we have a number of issues that are on the list for 2014 when it comes to aviation and probably what most of your viewers are going to care about. Um, we have a new issuary on our list this year and it's about safety and helicopter operations. And that can be anything from EMS operations to search and rescue um, to public use for law enforcement or others. And so we see a lot of air tours when it comes to helicopters. And, and over the years, we've investigated a lot of accidents in all different areas of helicopter safety. We want to make sure that this year we put the spotlight on that area and we focus on how to make improvements when it comes to safe rotary wing operations. Mm -hmm. Now what fell off the list this year and is there a reason that they fell off and what could be the, the different reasons that you would choose not to have them on again? Well for the most part what we do is we try to elevate issues to our most wanted list. Um, it's really an opportunity for us to focus on those advocacy areas that we think are ripe for change. We don't really vote things off of our list. It's really about which areas we think we have the opportunity to make a lot of progress on this year. It could be because those are hot issues. It could be because there's legislative opportunities to make change in those areas, or it may be that we need to put a finer focus. One of the issues where we're doing a little bit more of a laser focus on has to do with general aviation. For the last couple of years, we've had general aviation just as a major safety issue on our list. This year, we're focusing it down to communicating and creating awareness about hazardous weather in general aviation operations. And so we're going to take a very specific focus about how to identify weather hazards and also about how they're communicated in general aviation, whether it's through weather briefings or air traffic control or how pilots get their information. Mm -hmm. Now, runway safety has been a big issue. We've worked on that together for many years. Thank you for all yes. your 
support coming to our conferences and working with our, our safety committee. Now that's not on the list this year, and airport surface safety was last year. So does that mean that FAA's made a lot of progress, or is there just going to be uh, a little less focus on that as, as far as the top 10 this year? Well, with our top 10, we do want to identify areas where we think there are a lot of risk. Um, you all know for sure that there is a high degree of risk in the airport environment. You have to work hard to mitigate that risk every single day through good practices, policies, procedures, good technology, all of those things come into play. But we have seen some changes over the last few years. The FAA does deserve some credit for making changes. Changes uh, that include a new pilot training rule. We want to make sure we keep pilots taking off on the correct runway. They've got some procedures in there to prevent against a Lexington type of accident where pilots are taking off on the wrong runway. They've also changed some procedures when it comes to air traffic control over the last few years about making sure that you have adequate runway clearances uh, for, for sequential uh, passing so, uh, across multiple runways, and so right. that's important. They've also um, standardized some ICAO phraseology, things that we had had concerns about in previous investigations. So that's definitely progress being made. And when we look at the airport environment for your members, we definitely see some technological changes taking place in the airport environment. We are disappointed that runway status lights aren't more widely deployed or um, being able to communicate to pilots through things like the PAPI lights to show occupied runways. But we do know that a lot of progress has been made when it comes to runway safety, either making sure that there are adequate runway safety areas or putting in EMAS systems. And so those are all areas where we've seen some good progress. We have a lot of more work to do, but we did want to recognize that progress. That issue is not on our most wanted list, but that doesn't mean that we won't be working with all of the airports and AAA in the coming year to identify how to mitigate risk. Right, very good. One of the unique things I thought this year was that the recommendations touched a lot of the modes. You know, each recommendation could is very multimodal um, in its nature. So the safety, the, the fire safety one, is there anything that is going to be touching airports this year? Maybe they came out of the hearings for the Asiana accident or is anything to do with the, the ARF standards? Well, there's certainly always opportunities to learn, and I think when we see major events, those, those do provide us a really good window in looking at what could be improved and what lessons we can learn as a community about those. And so we did hold a hearing on the Asiana accident in December. Mm -hmm. um, one of the panels that we focused on had to do with emergency response, and so we will certainly be taking a look at that and also looking at San Francisco to identify what lessons that they have learned, how they have self-identified some of the challenges that they face, steps that they have put into place there that we might be able to share with other airports as well. And so really it's about collaboration. SFO is part of our investigation mm -hmm. and they are participating as a party, not only providing us with information, but also taking away information from the investigation. Uh, we expect to complete that report in advance of the one year anniversary of the accident. And I think we can certainly expect recommendations in all areas uh, of response because we saw not just in this accident that there was extraction of passengers and there, were, um, there was a really good story to tell here. 99% of the passengers survived, but there was also fire. And so there was use of firefighting devices, things like snozzle um, and, and a lot of different issues that just came up uh, in this investigation. How to triage um, multiple uh, injuries and how to deal with fatalities in an environment where you've got a lot going on in a very chaotic scene. Um, in this accident, for sure, in Asiana, we saw the tragic consequences of not identifying victims and, and dealing with them in a way that protected them in the post-crash chaos. Yeah, there's always more to learn. Now, the industry, we have a lot of innovation. You mentioned technology with runway safety, but there's a lot going on. Um, UAS is the, the hot buzzword right now, drones. I mean, looking ahead to the next couple years as you, th you think ahead to the most wanted list and areas where the NTSB is going to focus, do you see UAS safety as maybe rising a little bit to the top? I know you've done some work on that previous years. Yes, the Safety Board actually has experience investigating accidents involving UASs. We had a Customs and Border Protection predator uh, that went down several years ago. We conducted an investigation into that and actually 
uh, several years ago, we also held a forum on UASs, and this is really before they were the hot topic that they are now. We have policies and procedures with respect to reporting events or accidents that involved unmanned systems and our role in investigating those. We work very closely with our counterparts at the FAA, but certainly we'll be paying close attention to this. And I think another area that's, uh, that's new uh, to aviation is certain, certainly commercial space flight. And so that's another area that uh, we have uh, new requirements and standards and coordination with both NASA and FAA about what to do in the event of an accident. Now moving forward throughout the year, how can airports work more closely in concert with NTSB on these recommendations and just collaboratively on our shared goal of aviation safety? Well, I think certainly conversations like this are great uh, for everybody, Melissa, both on both sides. Um, we learn a lot from interacting with the community, with the airport community, going to conferences, listening to your members, being able to interact with them, share with them the experiences that we've had. And unfortunately, many of the experiences that we had come out have come out of tragedy. And so those are very difficult environments in which to learn some of these lessons, but they're ones that are very ripe to make sure that what we find is shared with others and I think most in the airport community are eager to learn and they want to have best practices and so that's something we definitely see in this community that there is a desire for people to be educated to get um, you know really the accreditation and the work that goes on whether it's through best practices or whether it's through developing new standards this is a community that really embraces change and I think is always working to try to get ahead of it and so Unfortunately, as we learn from some of these very tragic accidents, we do have many friends in the airport community that are willing to listen and willing to take those recommendations and figure out how to make them apply for airports both large and small. Well, we look forward to working with you, um, continuing our relationship and with all of your board members and, and your wonderful staff. Thank you for your commitment to safety and all that you do. Thank you for being here today. Is there anything that I forgot to ask you you'd like to add or emphasize? No, I just hope everyone has a happy and a very safe 2014. Thank you. Now, can you do something about this weather with these recommendations? <laughs> well, I have a flight out on Saturday, so uh, I have to say one of the things that I am always thankful of is the professionalism of the airports community. I know that um, one of the things that they're going to be focused on, regardless of the weather, is how to make sure that operations are safe and efficient, and so when I travel on Saturday with my family, I know that I'm in good hands. You are, we'll take good care of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, thanks for being here. And thank you for watching One on One. Please go to ntsb.gov to get more information about the Most Wanted list. Wherever you are, we hope you're safe and warm. I'm Melissa Sabatini. Thank you, we'll see you next time.